Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 15 of the chapter Periodic Classification of Elements. The topic of this video is the periodic trend of ionization enthalpy. What is ionization enthalpy? If you take uh, an isolated gaseous atom of an element in its ground state and you try to remove the most loosely bound electron in that, the amount of energy that you use to remove that outermost electron or the most loosely dangling electron in the atom, that is known as the ionization enthalpy. It is the amount of energy that you need to snatch away an electron from an atom. And that electron should be the outermost electron. And what kind of an atom should it be? It should be an isolated gaseous atom. Why isolated? Why gaseous? And why in the ground state? Is because we do not want, we only want the amount of energy required to remove that electron. We do, and we are measuring that. Since ionization enthalpy is a measurement of just that energy that is required to remove that electron. The other, if it was not in the gaseous state, we would have to use energy to overcome the attraction of the atoms among themselves. If it has to be isolated because you want a single atom, you don't want other atoms affecting it and therefore affecting the energy. And it should be in the ground state for the first ionization enthalpy. Now, if you have an atom X in the gaseous state and it's isolated and you use a certain amount of energy, let us say it is uh, a Y amount of energy to remove the electron, we get an ion, a cation, a monopositive cation, that is a cation having a single positive charge and an electron is released. The energy required to remove this electron is known as the ionization enthalpy. And since we are removing the first electron from the atom, it is also called the first ionization enthalpy. Now, whenever we have to remove an electron from an atom, we are overcoming the attraction of the nucleus uh, for the electron. That is the attraction of the nucleus. Uh, we have to overcome it and then pull it out of the, uh, of the attraction of the atom. So, ionization enthalpy is always positive. We say an enthalpy or energy is positive when we provide energy to a system to carry out the process. So whenever you are providing energy to carry out a change, you are giving, you are adding energy. Since you are adding energy, the energy is always positive. So ionization enthalpy always has a positive sign before it, which means you have to provide this energy to carry out this change. When this was the first ionization enthalpy, once an electron has been removed, you now have a cation which is still in the gaseous state and you can use more energy to remove the second electron. When you use more energy to remove the second electron, you get a dipositive cation and an electron is released and this is known as the ionization enthalpy 2 or the second ionization enthalpy. When you remove the first electron, the number of protons in the nucleus remain the same. Therefore, the attraction for the remaining electrons that they experience is greater uh, by the nucleus because that one extra proton which is there in the nucleus is also going to, its attraction is also going to be distributed among all the electrons that are now present. So every electron experiences a slightly great, greater attraction by the nucleus. So the second and then you're trying to remove another electron from that, uh, from that ion. The, therefore the removal of the second electron requires even more energy than the first ionization enthalpy. So usually the second ionization enthalpy is greater than the first ionization enthalpy. And if you have to remove the third electron from this dipositive ion, then the ionization enthalpy for removing the third electron would be called the third ionization enthalpy and that would be still greater than the second ionization enthalpy. This is what ionization enthalpy is. Now, Greater ionization enthalpies are always greater than the ones preceding them. That is, second ionization enthalpy is greater than first ionization enthalpy. If we plot 
the atomic numbers and ionization enthalpies of elements and we plot make this plot i made this for the first 60 elements if you do this you observe a, a a kind of a periodicity a repetition in the pattern and this periodicity was observed and it was seen that if you plot the ionization enthalpies of elements from 1 to 60 we find that the noble gases they form peaks which means they have the highest ionization first we are plotting only the first ionization enthalpies they have the highest first ionization enthalpies what is the reason for this very high ionization enthalpy of all the noble gases it would be they are stable they do not need to lose electrons and since they have a very stable electronic configuration stability means a lower energy so removing an electron from such a state would be very difficult and hence the first ionization enthalpies of the uh, of the noble gases is found to be the highest and when we see when we just observe this we find the bottom elements in these uh, peaks the bottoms to be occupied by the alkali metals and in the previous videos i told you that alkali metals have electronic configuration ns1 they have one electron in their outermost shell if they lose this one electron they will acquire the configuration of the noble gas preceding them so if lithium which has electronic configuration 1s2 2s1 if it loses one electron it acquires the configuration of helium which is 1s2 sodium would uh, then sodium would have the 2s completed and it has 3s1 potassium is 4s1 rubidium is 5s1 and cesium is 6s1 so we find that all these elements at the bottom are the alkali metals and they have only one electron in their outermost shell and if they lose this one electron they will acquire the configuration of the preceding noble gas which is a very stable configuration therefore they are the easiest they lose their electron the most easily and hence you have to use the least energy to remove an electron from them and therefore they form the bottom of the ionization enthalpies in all the elements the peaks are occupied by noble gases and the bottoms are at the bottom are present the alkali metals they have the least ionization enthalpies and from this if we look closely a longer period the alkali metal is the first member of a period and the noble gas is the last member of a period so if you observe this trend you will see that in every period the ionization enthalpy may show a little zigzag fashion but on the whole it seems to be increasing from the alkali metal to the next noble gas that is if we move across a period we find the trend that the ionization enthalpies across a period seem to be increasing i have plotted this graph of the ionization enthalpies of the second period that is lithium beryllium boron carbon nitrogen oxygen fluorine neon and on the whole it is increasing except for boron and oxygen which have lesser enthalpies than the preceding ele element but on the whole we find the curve to be going upwards so ionization enthalpy is seen to be increasing in a period and if you look at a group you know if you see helium neon argon krypton xenon do you see a kind of a it's a decrease on the whole if i am comparing only the noble gases and let's compare only the uh, alkali metals lithium is higher sodium lower potassium even less rubidium less cesium less so we looking at this we observe that if we just compare the uh, uh, the elements in a group we find that this is the first group lithium sodium potassium rubidium cesium we find that the ionization enthalpy decreases as we go down a group what is the reason for this uh, decrease or increase across a period or down a group what are the factors which determine the ionization enthalpy in the case of alkali metals i told you they lose electrons easily because they get a stable uh, in order to get the stable noble gas configuration and noble gases have high ionization enthalpies because they already have a stable configuration so what are the 
factors which are affecting the ionization enthalpy. There are two main factors. One is the attraction by the nucleus. How much attraction is the nucleus exerting on the electrons which are, which are the outermost electrons? So that is known as the nuclear charge. And the other factor that affects is the repulsion or you could call it the screening effect. The effect of electrons which are present inside the outermost shell which screen the outermost electrons from getting direct attraction by the nucleus. And since they screen them, they cause a hindrance and the outermost electrons do not experience the same uh, charge that they would if there were no electrons present uh, between them and the nucleus because they are not experiencing the attraction by the nucleus directly. There's hindrance, there's screening in between and those electrons which are present in between, they would if cause the effective nuclear charge to be less than what it actually is. So these are two factors which come into play which can explain these periodic trends. So let's see what are these periodic trends and how, why they uh, follow these trends. So let us first observe this group. In this group, the first group, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, we find the ionization enthalpy to be decreasing. And if we look at the electronic configurations as I wrote here, lithium has one electron in the 2s orbital, most, the most loosely bound electron. Sodium is 3s1, potassium is 4s1, 5s1, 6s1. In this case, what is happening, every element down a group has one shell increasing and the shell inside it or all the shells within that outermost shell are completely filled. And if they are completely filled, the number of electrons with every new member, the number of electrons which are present to screen the outermost electrons are increasing. So for lithium, you only have the 1s electrons which are screening it. For sodium, what is the electronic configuration of sodium? It is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and then 3p, 3s1. So it has all these electrons which are screening it from the attraction of the nucleus. So the screening is much much greater than the effect of the nuclear charge. The nuclear charge no doubt increased. This uh, lithium had atomic number only 3 and sodium has atomic number 11. It means lithium had only 3 protons in its nucleus attracting the electrons while sodium has 11 protons but although it has 11 protons the outermost electron one it is further away from the nucleus therefore as it is it has it has higher energy so the energy difference the energy required to remove an electron which is further away remember the magnet and the nail if the nail is further away from the magnet it is easier to remove the nail so one is the size the size is increasing and on top of it the attraction being felt by the nucleus is lesser due to electrons present in the inner shells which are causing more and more screening effect so we find that as we go down a group the screening effect is much more and the distance from the nucleus is much more as a result of which it becomes easier to remove the electrons as we go down the group. So that is the reason for the decrease in ionization enthalpy as we go down a group. On the other hand, in a period, what is happening? An electron is adding in the same shell. As we move from left to right in a period, an electron is adding in the same shell and at the same time, a proton is adding in the nucleus. But there are no additional electrons to screen. The number of electrons in the inner shell are the same. And therefore, as the electrons keep adding to the same shell and the nucleus 
uh, is going on adding protons the effective nuclear charge being experienced by the atoms as we move from left to right in the periodic table as we move one electron one proton increases and the the shell is the same so the attraction the magnet is becoming stronger and it attracts the nails even more strongly and the screening effect is not being there's no difference in the screening effect therefore what becomes more important the increase in the nuclear charge is the factor that affects the size or affects the ionization enthalpy more than the screening effect because there is no difference in the screening effect so as the screening effect remains the same and nuclear charge increases the electrons are attracted even more strongly by the nucleus and the size of the atom also shrinks ever so slightly and since it keeps on shrinking the distance now the magnet the nail is closer to the magnet and therefore removing that nail is even more difficult and that's the reason why as we move from the across a period the ionization enthalpy increases but we also observe that two elements here in this one example we find that sometimes there is a an element which should have ionization enthalpy greater like boron should have ionization enthalpy greater than beryllium oxygen should have ionization enthalpy greater than uh, nitrogen but there are some differences like there are some abnormalities boron has ionization enthalpy less than beryllium what is the reason for that again let us write down the configurations Beryllium is the fourth element. So, what is the configuration of beryllium? It is 1s2, 2s2. And boron, this is beryllium. And boron configuration would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. Boron has the outermost electron in the p orbital, while beryllium has the outermost electron in the s orbital although both are in the second shell according to energy levels 2p has higher energy than 2s therefore 2p electrons are further away from the nucleus than the one that has lower energy and if they are further away then although it is in the same shell removing a 2p electron would be easier than removing a 2s electron right so removing the 2p electron because one the s electron uh, orbitals are spherical so they have greater penetration effect what is the penetration effect it is that s orbitals are spherical so they are smallest in size and they kind of penetrate into the nucleus while the p orbital is if this is the nucleus the p orbital is a dumbbell and it's larger than the s orbital and since the electrons in the p orbital are further away from the nucleus it becomes and they are less penetrating they are not literally uh, spheres going into the they are more diffuse they are a little further away they are scattered so we find that the p orbital has higher energy and hence the loss of an electron from the p orbital would be easier and that's why boron has to lose that electron from the 2p orbital while beryllium has to lose the electron from the p orbit uh, sorry, from the 2s orbital and that's why boron has lesser ionization enthalpy so now let us take this nitrogen and oxygen what are their electronic configurations and how do we justify the lower ionization enthalpy of oxygen in comparison to nitrogen now nitrogen is the seventh element so what would its electronic configuration be it would be 1s2 2s2 and 2p3 and oxygen would be 1s2 2s2 2p4 right 2p3 remember according to hunch rule of multi maximum multiplicity if an uh, a subshell uh, there are three whatever is the number of orbitals in a subshell the electrons first singly occupy them right and pairing starts only after the uh, all the orbitals of a subshell have been singly occupied so when the electrons go in uh, 2p orbitals of nitrogen if these are the three uh, p orbitals 
the electrons in nitrogen would go 1, 1, 1 in 2px, 2py and 2pz. One electron goes to each p orbital in nitrogen and half filled and completely filled orbitals are more stable. So this is a very is kind of stable configuration. Therefore, removal of an electron to disturb this stable configuration, the amount of energy required to remove that electron would be more. But in the case of oxygen, this electron is paired here. And if you remove this electron, it would rather lead to a stable configuration. That is a stable half-filled subshell. So that would be a desired thing. So removal of this electron would be easier. What is ease? Ease is nothing but the amount of energy that is required to remove an electron. So if it's easier to remove it, it means you need lesser energy to remove this electron in oxygen. So in nitrogen, since there's one electron in each uh, orbital of the subshell 2p, it is difficult to disturb it due to Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity and half-filled subshells are more stable and therefore it's difficult to remove that electron. But in oxygen, since there is a singly paired orbital in a subshell, that uh, it would removal of that one electron would lead to a half-filled subshell which is more stable. So these were the trends in the ionization in Thal B. So now after this, we'll do uh, two more properties before we move on to the chemical properties of and the periodic trends in chemical properties. If the video helped you, please like it and subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please return for more videos in chemistry. Bye-bye.